So my name is Kasim Rafi. as always, I will be presenting this webinar. Uh, I'm the customer support rep here for the iTrack 365 team, and this week's webinar will be about uh, user management part two, employee offboarding. Um, when you get the chance, I do recommend watching part one of employee onboarding, uh, just to get that full holistic sort of uh, information. Today we'll be talking about a couple things and we'll go from how to deactivate somebody from the admin portal all the way down to um, removing somebody from the uh, team's, or uh, sorry, removing someone from the iTrack system, which includes removing from email notification, removing from teams, and assigning any activities or any forms that are, you know, might be in draft or you want to make sure they get finished out. Cool. So we'll begin with the admin Microsoft uh, portal. And the first thing you want to do is go into active users. And you want to find the user in question. Last week we created someone named Aaron Pazek. So we'll just open up his user record account. And we'll do a couple things here. So let's say, you know, um, the two scenarios. One is Aaron no longer uses iTrack, but he's still part of the company and he still needs those um, Microsoft esque licenses. And the second scenario is, you know, Aaron is completely just let go, terminated, and he's fully gone from the tenant. So for the first scenario, what we would do is we would just go to manage groups and we would just actually remove him from those D365 or iTrack 365's um, groups and that just gets rid of him in the iTrack CRM system. All right, so we just hit remove there and then eventually it might take 15 minutes to sync, but in CRM we would see his user record being inactive. The second thing you'd want to do, um, and the second scenario if it was terminated completely, we would go down to licenses and apps. We would find the licenses he has, and we would just, you know, click it off and hit save changes. Okay, so now we see here that it's unlicensed, but his user is still technically active. What this does is after 30 days, um, Aaron passes X user will eventually get deactivated or deleted. Um, I do recommend this style in case for whatever reason, you'll have to re-add him to, um, you know, maybe jump back into his account and, you know, take some files off his computer that sort of were uh, customary to you guys' company. Maybe he had some Power BI reports up that you wanted from his workspace, whatever it may be. Uh, it's just better to keep his record alive for those 30 days in case something comes up. So once that's done, once you removed him from the license or the group, that's all you'll have to do in the admin portal. And you just have to wait for a thing to happen for the CRM side. All right. So as for the CRM side, we're going to go over a couple of things. We're going to go over forms, assignment rules, um, sort of change owner assignment of forms, form activities, so form tasks, corrective actions, recommendations, um, the employee record, the user option admin record, the user record, and uh, I, there are some other things like training task and procedure tasks that all follow sort of the same cadence, but I'm not going to mention them as it's a bit more specific to uh, clients and everyone necessarily uses that, but if you follow the steps that I've done um, for form tasks, it really just transfers over properly with training tasks. And there is no particular record that you'll have to do that, though I will leave employees and user option admin records to the very end, um, just, just for the sake of it. So the first thing you want to do is open up this advanced find filter. And uh, if you need more information about advanced find, we do have a video document in our YouTube channel for that. So I do recommend watching that video as well. All right, so we'll start with forms. The first thing you want to do is look for, on the left-hand side, type F and just find forms, which is at the very bottom. And we'll hit select. And now we want to sort of do a couple of things. We want to make sure that um, if we scroll down to owner, we want to go equals and you want to go a Aaron. Okay, so when you hit results here, we can see that Aaron had two forms that were owned by him that, you know, if we do deactivate his user, unless we're a system admin like I am right now, sort of no one else can make those changes. Those rig managers won't be able to make those changes or change any of the form tasks. So the first thing you want to do here is you want to double click this little check mark up here, which selects all of them. You want to hit assign forms. And you want to assign them to, we'll assign them to 
not that percent. We'll say look up more records and we'll find a field operator. We'll send to fire and flame safety, for example. Add and hit assign. Now what this does is now that fire and flame safety user can go in and complete the forms that Aaron was filling out. You also have the option to cancel the form or just deactivate a form fully in case those aren't very important. And that's just done by selecting that check mark and hitting this deactivate button up here. Um, you can always delete, though I don't recommend deleting just in case you do ever need that data in the future. Cool. The next we're going to do, we'll take a bit of a tangent here and I'm going to explain something before I go into it. We're going to talk about um, a form type status. So if we go into our COVID business continuity plan, we hit related and we go into form type status. We can see here that at the review phase, the assigned user will become Aaron Pasek. So if I open that up once more, it says here we can change assigned to user, Aaron Pasek. You can also do this by um, form business unit specifically. And then you can also go owner assigned to, we made an assignment role called foreman. And if we open up that foreman assigned assignment role, um, usually this is done by um, by team, but we can see here that the user of this form and assignment role is Aaron Pasek. So what that means is whenever it hits review, the owner becomes Aaron or the foreman team, and that assigned to field becomes Aaron Pasek as well. So what we would do then to fix that is you go back into advanced find, go down to forms, or sorry, go down to assignment roles for the first one. I've already created the, the view earlier, right? But we're saying, so we're going to hit the select button, scroll all the way down to FBU assignments, you know, and then where user equals Aaron Pazek. And if we hit results, we can see that that foreman uh, FBU shows up. So from there, we'll open it up. We'll go into the form business unit assignments. We'll open up this form business unit. And we'll change that user from Aaron to fire and flame safety or whoever the replacement is. From there, we'll hit save and close. And when this refreshes, if I go back here and hit results, we see that form is no longer there. The next thing you want to do is go to form type status. Set out to the view. And we have changed assigned user equals Aaron or changed owner user equals Aaron Pasek. And how we created this little or thing, I'll just quickly delete this, or I'll ungroup it, we just select the two rows, and at the top here we hit group or, All right? From there we hit results, and we see that the same review status is still assigned to Aaron. If I open this up, we can scroll down to here, remove Aaron, and put that fire and flame safety. And just another bit of a tangent, we can, you know, assign it to a specific team. We can assign it to employees, one, two, three of the form that was submitted, category teams, the employee that reports to, and some other cool stuff there. So you do have a pretty big arsenal of tools to how you can uh, change the form type status. So from there, I'll hit save and close. All right, I'll go back here just to make sure it changed. And we see that it was review, now becomes fire and flame safety. The last thing you want to do uh, in terms of child records is you want to go all the way up to activities. And you want to go select and you want to go into owner equals that same user. All right, hit results here. We can see that there were two two tasks, right? Activity type form tasks. And you will you might see emails here, you might see a lot of stuff. If the emails aren't important, what you can do is go into advanced find. You can scroll down to an activity type and you can equals sort of, you know, you scroll down the list. We say form tasks are pretty important. Maybe an opportunity to close if you're using the sales side. Maybe just task and training tasks. So we'll, we'll do all three of these, all right? Hit OK. And then we'll just hit OK and hit results. Obviously, there's still only two, but that way it filters out those emails, those calls that might be uh, cluttering your uh, view here. The other thing you can also do is just filter by activity type and by activity status. So let's say, you know, 
Um, Aaron here is working for a year. Early in the year, he finished a couple form tests that were closed. You no longer want to change those records, right? So instead of that, all you'd have to do is either sort by activity status or add a filter in here saying activity status equals, you know, uh, open, right? Cool. So from there, we're going to hit the double check mark again. And we have, so I'm going to show you guys another tangent, sorry. This little edit button allows you to edit the record in multiple ways. So if I only selected one of them and I hit edit, it will actually open the form task record itself. All right, so you see here that this is the form task. You can change a bunch of things here. Whereas if you select both or multiple and you select to edit this activity, it actually opens up a separate um, tooltip or pop-up window. And from there, you're able to multi uh, edit multi multiple of them. So what you can do here is you can change the owner, you can change the employee, you can change the priority in case you know something was submitted incorrectly and you want to change it in mass, this is the fastest way to do it. We're just going to hit cancel for now. We're going to hit assign activities. Like I said, back to that user fire and play. User assigned. Yep. So now that he's the owner, he's able to, um, you know, maybe change who was assigned to, change the due date, change the start date to better fit um, whenever they need to get done. Cool. So once that's finished, we'll hit close advanced find. It's pretty simple there. We're going to go into the employee record here. We're going to look for the person we created last week, which was Aaron. Right. And it's just as simple as hitting deactivate up here. We're going to say he's terminated voluntarily or involuntary or with cause. Doesn't matter for us at the moment, so we'll hit deactivate. And his user is now deactivated. From there, we're going to hit related. We're going to go down into user options. And then right here, we see that he has two. So we'll just hit this little check mark here. We'll hit deactivate and deactivate them from there. All right. And if we hit this little drop down, we can see how many are active and how many are inactive. And if you ever need to activate them for whatever reason again, hit this little check mark and hit activate here. That's always the benefit to, uh, compared to deleting the records. Yeah. So the next thing you want to do, just really just to sort of be safe, is you can check his activities related. You can sort of just go through the line. Are there any events that are still open to him? Are there any form tasks still open to him? And as you just go through it, so we see here that those form tasks are still there. And the reason that is, is if we open it, we see that the owner is fire and flame safety, but the employee is past Zach Aaron. So what that might mean is, you know, maybe he just assigns it to himself once he gets into the portal, or if, you know, fire and flame safety is that manager, he can assign it to a separate employee who uh, might need to finish the recommendation or the form task. And you should just go through the line and see what you need to change or you need to remove. But by changing the assignment role and form type status and form activities, you're really just ensuring that um, everything can be closed off. And once he leaves the company, there won't be any bounce back emails that you might get because of any um, sort of assignment roles there. The final thing I'll mention though, and this is something that maybe we talk about in future webinars when it gets more complex, is we do have multiple workflows working in the back. Now, generally they're not hard coded. Usually we have them set to a team or to a user. So with that being said, um, A, the iTrack system is smart enough to say, okay, you know what, Aaron is now inactive, so any emails that come to this team, we can just ignore him because his user record is inactive. And B, um, if it is hard-coded, we would have to jump in there and make a note of who we're changing it to. But like I said, we hardly hard-code stuff in the um, processes section. And the final thing I'll show you guys is just to make sure the user record was uh, deactivated is we go into advanced settings here on the top right. This takes us back to the old UI. We go into security. We go into users. And we just look for Aaron, see if he was deactivated. Yeah, so Aaron is no longer there. All right, and if we go to disabled users, we can see that Aaron was disabled. So usually do user, user record first. Then when you're finishing closing off and assigning all the other activities, all the other forms, you just come back and check to see that Aaron was um, properly disabled. So with that being said, that's all I do have to say to this. It's a pretty, it's relatively simple process. It's just a matter of knowing in your internal system, you know, who's taking over the um, terminated employees. 
tasks and activities, as well as the forms. And if you guys ever have any questions, my inbox is always open. I do reply pretty quick for you guys to send a message to support at itrack365.com and uh, help you guys in real case scenarios there as well. So with that being said, have a great day and I'll talk to you guys later.